Hello and welcome to the Headache Doctor podcast. I'm Dr. Taves. I'm the owner and founder of Novera Headache Center here in Colorado Springs, and it's my mission to empower everyone with headaches and migraines to break free from a life of fear and dependence and thrive in everything you do. This episode is, is going to be very practical and helpful for you at home. There's two things I want to hit on uh, that everyone can do on a daily basis. They're not specific exercises, uh, but just principles to follow. We're also going to talk about... Um, sitting and this sedentary lifestyle and how um, there can be some misconceptions around rest. So first of all, I want to talk about two things that everyone should be doing on a daily basis to help prevent their body and the tension in your neck uh, from reaching this threshold and crossing this threshold line so that you uh, can avoid experiencing a headache or a migraine. Um, If you don't have headaches or migraines, I would suggest that you implement these principles because um, just because your body is not in pain does not mean that the way you move or the lack of of movement is okay. Uh, Our body can compensate in our movements for years and years and decades uh, without any sort of pain. Um, And then we wake up one morning and realize, oh my gosh, I have a headache or my shoulder hurts or whatever it is. And really the treatment approach is reversing years or decades of this sort of Um, dysfunctional movement pattern or inefficient movement pattern. So um, the first thing I want to talk about is is movement. Um, People ask me all the time, what are what are the specific things I can do at home? And there are specific things that patients can do. Um, But in general, I recommend that every patient, every person get up and walk around uh, frequently. So let's say at least twice a day for a half an hour each, um, each time. And getting up and walking is going to be the most helpful, um, one of the most helpful things that you can do. Now, again, it's not like specific to headaches and it's not specific to the upper part of the neck. But what's happening over time, if you think about uh, the podcast where we talked about how this this injury to the upper neck got started. Uh, For some people, it's a traumatic injury. For a lot of people, it's this sort of sedentary lifestyle uh, loss of movement, and the body is responding to a lack of movement. And so we need to implement movement into our day, and walking is is one of the most helpful things. So walking kind of is this, uh, it it walks this, it's this middle ground between um, playing into these inefficient movement patterns enough so so for example, uh, I'll use an extreme. If I were to say, go do, um, go, go lift some 50 pound um, dumbbells and try to push them over your head 10 times, uh, that would be an extreme of movement. Now it is movement. It is kind of working those different joints and muscles. Uh, but if, if your movement pattern is inefficient, that will likely increase tension uh, through the neck or through your shoulders, resulting in potential injury uh, or stress that develops, and that can be detrimental to the patient with headaches or migraines. Um, and so, uh, other examples of that could be uh, there's a lot of the high intensity interval training, especially these video uh, sort of workouts that people are doing at home. And oftentimes, those workouts are really good because it gets your heart rate up. Uh, but they can be detrimental because uh, when you're fatigued, those sort of inefficient movements uh, are then amplified. So your body is going to find a way to do the push-up or to do the squat or to do the plank, um, but it's going to it's going to use muscles that are already fatigued. It's going to find movements that um, are already uh, inefficient, and then it's going to amplify that. So there's also potential for uh, injury or increased tension in those things. Now, the other end of the spectrum, we have basically just sitting on the couch and, and doing nothing or um, finding you know, the, the dark room and, and just laying in bed. Um, now, I want to empathize with patients with headaches and migraines because when you have a headache or a migraine, um, you really do not feel like doing anything. And I understand that. If you feel like you can get up and move around and walk, I would encourage you to do that. Um, because the body is not going to respond well to no movement and it's not going to respond well to added stress above and beyond what it can tolerate. So when I recommend walking, it's, it's generally helpful. I would say it's helpful for just about everyone to walk. And that's because it walks this line between 
Uh, it's in between the not doing anything and the uh, overstressing your body's movement patterns so that they're detrimental. So um, walking throughout the day a couple times a day is going to be one of the best things um, for you in, in getting your body moving again. Uh, a couple things when you walk, I want you to um, swing your arms. Think of a power walker, but maybe not uh, as intense of movements um, so people don't look at you funny. But um, a lot of patients or people, when they walk, they, they will hold one arm by their side and swing the other, something like that. So try to make your movements um, symmetrical and uh, be intentional with them so that you're trying to get rotation through your, your shoulders, your upper back, um, and your neck will thank you for that. Um, again, it's not the posture you're in throughout the day, it's the movement that you're performing throughout the day that's important. So even sitting with perfect posture at your desk in the world's greatest chair is not going to provide your joints with the movement they need. You still need to get up and walk around. Um, kind of tied to this is this idea, and I would say most of the people I communicate with or that come see me are of the mindset that their body resting is going to be helpful or healing. That generally is is not true. If you find yourself um, resting on the couch or, um, I don't know, taking naps throughout the day um, or just generally, you know, sitting and, and allowing your body to rest, oftentimes that's it's not what your body needs. Your your joints uh, and your musculoskeletal system is kind of longing for some movement. And again, no movement is is uh, not going to be helpful and too much uh, or overstressing the system is also not helpful. So um, uh, walking is going to uh, be the balance between those two. But it's this misconception that if I just uh, go home, relax on the couch, um, let my body uh, just sort of reset, then it, it it's a helpful thing to do. And I would sort of lean into that and challenge that and say, your body is responding to a lack of movement or these joints not being able to go through their full range of motion throughout the day, um, that it's longing for movement. Um, we see this with exercise. Exercise is one of the more helpful things. It actually will energize you. It'll um, allow you to, to tolerate um uh, pain better. It'll um, give you sort of the, the same sort of hormones that oftentimes are uh, released or uh, manipulated with medication, and um, but in a more natural process. So uh, your body likes to move, um, and then if you can if you can get your heart rate up and do some exercise without um, triggering a headache, then then I would encourage you to to even take that step. So that's number one. Number two, um, I want to talk dig in a little bit more to sleeping position, and I know I've hit on this before, but uh, I'll go a little bit more in depth. Um, so walking and finding a, sort of a, a movement or exercise throughout the day is the first thing. And um, getting your sleep position correct so that your body is not finding itself with in, more tension than when you went to bed is important. I'll, oftentimes, so I've, I've posted on physical therapy um, uh, Facebook pages and things like that. And I actually get some pushback uh, when I say don't sleep on your stomach. And what's happening is uh, there's this assumption that if your neck is turned all the way, then it'll actually provide a stretch um, through the neck. Um, but the problem is that the joints in the upper part of the neck are are not going to, um, it, it's not that sort of just turning your head and lying in your stomach. It's not specific enough of a stretch to target the upper part of the neck. And so the mid portion of the neck is where, where your body naturally is going to get that motion from. And then the upper part of the neck is really just going to have some added stress through it. And so that added stress is not a therapeutic thing. Um, it's actually going to aggravate uh, this injury and the level of tension that's already there. And so just turning your head and doing this general rotation is not going to be helpful. I, I also believe that to be true with just general neck stretches. Um, I, I have recommended and I have a video if you follow us on social media uh, that will instruct you on how to isolate the upper part of the neck because it, that is the area that needs to be stretched and generally the middle portion of the neck is overstretched. And so if it's not specific enough, it actually can be more harmful than helpful. And so this is true with sleeping on your stomach. 
Now, some people can sleep on their stomach and be okay, uh, but if you have headaches or migraines or neck pain, I would encourage you to avoid that. That's the number one thing that if people find their way back into my office and their headaches or migraines come back, um, it, and if it, it typically is that they're sleeping on their stomach again or their sleeping position, um, they, they kind of got away from uh, the discipline of sleeping on their back or their side. Um, so try to avoid sleeping on your stomach. Uh, the side sleeping position is going to be uh, probably the most common that I, I talk through with patients. And uh, so it's, it's the three different pillow positions, uh, the supportive pillow, which typically I recommend a memory foam pillow. I have a, links to what I recommend on our website. Um, but if you lie on your side, um, it should be able to account for the gap uh, between the bed and your, and your head that your shoulder um, is, uh, is creating. The second pillow is going to be under the top arm, and this is to prevent you from rolling forward into that pseudo stomach position. Uh, and then the third pillow is going to be in between your knees with your knees bent. Um, I do not want you in this sort of pretzel or twisted position. So for side sleepers, that's where they get in trouble, where they say, yeah, I sleep on my side, but really uh, half of their body's rotated under their stomach because the bottom leg is straight, the top leg's bent, and they're naturally sort of uh, wanting to roll under their stomach. And which again is gonna increase the amount of stress through the neck uh, throughout the night. So, uh, and then back sleeping. Back sleeping is, is uh, another good option for anyone with headaches and migraines. Just make sure that your pillow um, can have a contour. It doesn't have to, uh, but you don't need anything that's super thick. So if you have the memory foam pillow, make sure that it's, it's contoured enough um, so that it'll cradle your head or your neck and it's not gonna prop your head up too much. Um, so uh, number one is find time throughout the day to, to walk, to move, uh, to do something. Um, understand that resting or the sedentary position, even if you have good posture, your body's not going to like that throughout the day. Um, and second is to uh, find a, a sleeping position that you are comfortable with and discipline yourself to sleep in that position. I went through this several years back because I used to sleep on my stomach and now I can't fall asleep if I don't have my proper pillows set up uh, or I'm sleeping on my back. One last thing, in addition to finding a proper sleeping position, walking throughout the day, uh, there are, I want you to change the way you think about your body, or at least be aware of how your body is positioned uh, in, in sitting and standing, uh, and then we've talked a little bit about walking. So for example, when you drive your car, I want you to um, think about how you normally position yourself. Uh, a lot of people will have one arm on the steering wheel. So uh, in my situation, I have my left arm on the steering wheel. Um, I'm kind of leaning to the right uh, slightly. And then of course, I've got my right foot working the pedals. So my body is kind of biasing this sort of right side shift. Uh, and so my neck is going to be uh, accommodating to that by sort of left side bending. Now, that might not seem like such a terrible thing, but compounding with how much we drive every day, uh, that pattern is what our body will get used to. And so instead of that pattern happening all the time and you grabbing the steering wheel with your left hand, uh, like I do, I would say either switch it up or focus on symmetry. So you want both hands on the wheel. Uh, you want to feel the seat with both hip bones rather than leaning one way or the other. Uh, and pay attention to what your shoulders are doing and, and your neck. Uh, you want your neck to be uh, in midline. And so if you can avoid this sort of side bending position, uh, then do it. And if you have a long commute, this is something you really wanna focus on. But especially, uh, I would guarantee you that almost everyone has a bias or a movement pattern uh, when we're driving and, and we sort of are, we're teaching our bodies to just do one movement, but we're not allowing them to do the opposite movement. Um, and so either do the opposite move, movement or find that symmetry. So same thing in standing. If you stand and you find yourself shifting weight into one hip or the other, which we all do, I would uh, recommend 
that you put your weight through both feet evenly. Um, a little tip, if you have knee pain or hip pain, to unlock your knees just a touch. Not so that if anyone's looking at you, they'll say you're standing funny, but just uh, instead of locking your knees out, unlock your knees a little bit. Um, and then have your weight evenly distributed. Um, so oftentimes we'll find ourselves resting on our hips, resting on our knee ligaments with our knee locked out, crossing our legs when we're standing. Try to avoid that as much as possible. Now, the way that your hips are stabilized uh, as you stand is going to affect the lumbar spine, the thoracic spine, and it all kind of travels up into the neck. So it is important to think about. Uh, the other thing, is when you're sitting and relaxing, so uh, f find yourself on the couch or at the uh, dining room table, uh, at a dining room chair, what I would suggest is you don't cross your legs um, or your ankles for that matter. What you want is to feel the seat, uh, the seat cushion with both your hips, have your feet firmly planted on the floor, uh, both feet on the floor, um, so that you're not wanting to shift one way or the other. Uh, I see this all the time in the clinic where patients come in and they have a hard time side bending their head one direction or the other. And their, their head will gladly side bend, let's say, to the right, but it won't want to side bend to the left. Um, I do believe what's happening is throughout the day we are teaching our body um, to have this sort of asymmetrical posture that happens in sitting and standing and our neck is just correcting for that because our eyes are always going to want to find that horizontal plane so that when our brain receives our visual input, it knows that everything is level rather than our head uh, being tilted. Um, now, if our head is tilted, that can increase stress uh, through those eye muscles because they're straining and uh, they have to work a little bit harder. And so all of this can be sort of sourced back to uh, sitting, standing posture throughout the day. So symmetry is sort of the important thing to remember here. Um, uh, sitting with both hip bones, uh, weight equally distributed, uh, standing with both feet placed on the floor and your weight evenly distributed, driving, let's say, you know, I'm, I'm more of an advocate of how your shoulders and your neck are positioned, but that 10 and 2 position that the, um, when you're learning how to drive or the recommended 10 and 2 is, is probably going to also be helpful for your shoulders and your neck. Um, and so some other things to consider just throughout the day. I am a big advocate of providing patients with the habits and sort of understanding of what their daily movement looks like. And that to me is some of the most important stuff. Now patients say, well, what specifically can I do? And like I said, there are things that you can specifically do, but this is going to be one of the most impactful things. If you can change the way you sleep, change the amount of movement that you're, that you're allowing your body to do throughout the day, and then be aware of those sitting, standing positions so that your spine is going to thank you for that. Um, if you can get those down, and then I know I've said a lot of this stuff before, but I'm saying it again because it's come up recently uh, with patients, and it is uh, these are the principles that I want everyone to follow. And if you're out there and, and maybe you're just kind of starting on this headache journey, this can be some this can be fairly impactful because it can prevent it from getting worse. And uh, if you've had headaches or migraines for 10, 20 years, I want you to start implementing this stuff now. You may not feel an immediate relief of pain or benefit, but if you do this, it will compound. So your body will thank you for it in six months, in a year. Um, and it will retrain how you think. And you will actually find yourself not wanting to... Um, to, to sit with your legs crossed. You'll find yourself uh, trying to go to bed at night and thinking, oh, I'd, I'd really want to roll into my stomach, but your brain will actually not let you fall asleep in that position because I'll be in your head and you'll be thinking, oh my gosh, I'm probably going to have a headache in the morning and I don't want to do that to myself. Um, you're also going to be sitting uh, at your home office or uh, on the couch and I'm also going to be in your head telling you that your body is not liking that you're not moving right now and you you haven't walked you haven't provided your upper back and your shoulders with the movement that they're wanting so you can thank me later for uh being in your conscience and and providing those sort of little convictions uh throughout the day uh, but honestly they will have a big impact if you can implement these little daily habits um, and like i said i'm a i'm a big 
um, com uh, I, I, I'm big into providing you things that you can sustain um, instead of saying, hey, do these 20 exercises that's going to take an hour. I just want you to understand um, what your body is going to want throughout the day. And then uh, you don't have to really change your routine or, um, or really do anything uh, different about your day, uh, but just implement these things and, uh, and you should be in better shape than if you were not. And uh, I, I thank you for listening to my podcast. Uh, more helpful material to come. So uh, stay tuned every week and uh, I will do whatever I can to provide you with the education and empowerment that you need uh, to break free from this life of fear of your next headache or migraine, the dependence uh, that oftentimes is found in, in medication, just feeling like you, they're slapping a, a Band-Aid on the symptoms. And uh, I want you to thrive in everything you do. And this episode, I think, will be helpful in getting you there. Uh, thanks again for listening.